Hi everyone, it's Dr. Brooks. I am out of town, but I got an article forwarded to me that got me a little worked up and I really wanted to get online immediately and film this because I know how well educated my families are and I'm a little bit afraid that you may not hear about this now, but this is the type of thing that's gonna trickle down for the next decade. And I really, really felt very strongly about talking about it. Those of you that are watching this that know me, you know that I don't really pull any stops when it comes to saying what I think is best for the kids, not only in my practice, but in general. So I'm just gonna dive right in. And I have the article like to my left, so forgive me for kind of looking, but um, we are gonna put this link in. This was a article published December 19th, so like a week ago. Not even so, not even that long ago. The title is The American Academy of Pediatrics Warns Against Elimination Diets for the Treatment of Autism. So here we go. Let me tell you a little bit about what it says. You can read it for yourself. And then I'm going to give you my three cents, more than my two cents. So they're warning against using a gluten and casein free diet for the treatment of autism. They did a clinical trial in 2016. This is where they're getting their basis. Now they haven't made any recommendations for the last decade, none, zero zilch, which is why when you go to your pediatricians, they don't talk about diet because we are all supposed to be following the American Academy of Pediatrics. No matter if you're an MD, DC, DO, NP, RN, doesn't matter, okay? They're sort of the quintessential boss of us, right? They're, they're telling us this is what's right, this is what's wrong, this is what's research-based, yada, yada, yada. Now, again, in clinical practice as a physician, no matter what your specialty is, no matter what your background is, you gotta take what makes sense and throw away the rest, okay? But there are pediatricians out there, and I know some of you have been through this, that they only do what's been recommended by the AAP and they don't do anything else, okay? So this is why I'm telling you this, because this is what they're gonna tell you when you say, my child's on a gluten and casein-free diet and it's benefited us greatly. They're going to say, well, there's no research to, okay? So this is why I'm giving this you, giving you, excuse me, this information. So they did a clinical study in 2016. They found that the elimination diet did not have any effect on child autism symptoms. They advise parents um, only to use research-based interventions and treatments. Let me start there. First of all, there's 30 years of research on gastrointestinal issues in children with autism. We also have tons of separate research on glutamorphin, casomorphin, how irritating it is to the stomach, how irritating it is to the di digestive tract, how our food sourcing and our digestive systems and our genetics all play a role in our gut health and why we are seeing an increase in problems, not just with kids, but with us as adults, Crohn's disease, IBS, blah, 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 you name it, right? The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So when they say it did not have an effect on child autism treatment, makes me want, it really, first of all, it infuriates me if you can't really tell by like my cheeks are red just talking about it. It infuriates me because it's not true. So here's what's funny. When you read further in the article, it basically, <laughs> it defines what gluten and casein are and they literally name like five things in each category. So that's my first question, AAP. What did you tell them was gluten and casein free? Did you, do you know? Did you actually give them a list? Did you actually help them with diet recommendations? Did you give them lists of foods that were okay, foods that are not okay? Did they actually follow the diet? 70% plus of my parents in 13 years of practice have found the diet to be noticeably, noticeably helpful. Okay, before supplements even start, we do diet changes. Noticeably, 70%, 70%. They're basically saying that it didn't have any effect, which tells me the diet wasn't done right. That's, that's the answer. The diet wasn't done right, period. And how many people were in this clinical trial? Like 10? I don't know, right? 
30% of my families will say, we didn't really notice a difference with the diet. Mm, right? Not 100%, okay? But statistically, very strong. I won't go into why because I've done tons of video and education and tons of stuff on my website about why, so we won't go there. But if you really wanna know why, let me know in the comments and we'll forward you to our website and you can do a little more reading on inflammation, diet, allergy, sensitivities, all that fun stuff, okay? Um, so that's the first thing. They didn't give proper direction. That's what I'm thinking. It's impossible that they came up with that conclusion. And then they give this statistic. This is what kills me. So anywhere from 23% to 70% of children with autism suffer from various gastrointestinal issues, which may explain why eliminate, elimination diets like a GFCF diet became so popular as alternative therapy. Okay. So if 70%, I'm going to go with 100, 100. Again, can't go into why and how, but again, leave it in the comments and we'll forward you the right info. 100% of kids on the spectrum have gastrointestinal issues, either when they walk into my office or a history of, all, 100%. So how can an elimination diet of two of the most inflammatory proteins to almost all of us, if not one or both, not be beneficial? How, how can that be possible if somebody already has an underlying gastrointestinal issue? Impossible, okay? Then the article goes into explaining what gluten and casein is, and like I said, it's pretty weak as to what they're telling. So I'm thinking that if they didn't give proper direction, which is sort of the mantra of life for why people aren't getting proper guidance and help and in turn not getting any results because you can't fix stupid, okay? Like the doctors that maybe you're going to, um, you are relying on the people that you think you found or they have doctor in front of their name so they must know what they're talking about. And sometimes among us doctors, you know, we're not smart sometimes. We don't get the right information sometimes. We give improper direction sometimes. So this is how you end up with bad advice. Um, not your fault, but definitely want to do a little more of the old digging, right? Before you pick somebody. Um, so then they backpedal in the same article. First paragraph, they say it did not show any improvement. They backpedal by the fourth paragraph to say, the new guidelines don't mean that elimination diets are without benefits, explains the author of the journal article. They might help some. So it's like, you can't say our new recommendation is don't do a GFCF diet for kids with autism, although it might be beneficial. So if there was a chance that it was beneficial, why would your advice not be? It may be beneficial to children with autism to go on a GFCF diet. What does it hurt? What does it hurt? It hurts nothing. Are they without anything? No, they're not. Are they nutritionally imbalanced? If you don't do your job right and get them balanced, which has, by the way, nothing to do with diet, because none of us are walking around with a perfect diet and a perfect amount of vitamins and minerals because of our food sourcing. Our food sourcing sucks, period. So you're not lacking anything by not giving your kids gluten and casein. You should be giving them a multivitamin. You should be giving them a fish oil, right? So what are you doing? You're just possibly benefiting them. You're not making it any worse. You're actually only have the uphill, right? There's not really a down, downside to it. So that's what I think makes me really upset because then they're saying you should do proven methods like ABA, which still to this day drives me nuts. Like 30 to 40 years later, after biomedical has started, which has now turned into functional medicine, as you know, we're still saying that there's no proven benefit except for ABA. So all of you doing diet changes, nutritional changes, occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, and are getting better, that we've ignored that. We've ignored what, 50 years of that? It's insanity to me. So they're still sticking to this. This is not changing. It's absolutely crazy to me. Um, anyway. Um, they are recommending early diagnosis and treatment, but their treatment to you is still going to be ABA. That's it. That's been what they've been telling you 
for literally as long as I've been in practice. And I know even longer than that because I have been in lectures with doctors that have been doing what I do for 25 years. So I know that's the only advice that they've ever given. We really, really need to get a clue. We need to get a clue. We as a medical profession need to get a clue. We need to be giving you guys all of your options, not just the part that insurance covers, not just the part that we think is research-based. What we do, what I do is research-based. It is science-based. It's not hocus pocus. It's not magic fairy dust. It's actual science. So I really wish that we would get the respect. The parents would get the respect. The doctors would get the respect. The therapists, OTST, PTs would get the respect that we all deserve because we're all working as a team. There is no one type of therapy that heals a child from autism. That, that, is, not a, that, is, not, that is not even a true story. And when you're reading that stuff online and when parents bring this up to me, and by the way, I'm thankful that they do so that I can actually give them the reality, that's not true. It's not one thing that gets a kid well. It's impossible. You might be reading that online. You might be reading that on a mom's group. You might be reading that on a blog, but you know what they're doing? They're attributing their healing to something and then leaving out all the other stuff. All the stuff matters. All of it matters. Diet matters. Supplement matters. Proper testing matters. The, the way that your doctor reads your results matters. The way that you follow directions matters. Your compliancy matters. All of this stuff matters and a little bit of time, right? A little bit of time. So anyway, it's really frustrating for me to read this when I've been in practice this long. I've always been like, ooh, hopeful that it would get better. And then this comes out and I'm thinking, oh, poop, mm -mm, not good for you. Um, so they're still going with a one in 59 American children have been diagnosed with autism, which I think actually, you know, they're always behind, you know that, you know, they're behind in like literal reality. I'm going to say it's probably somewhere in the thirties. It's pretty predominant and diet and nutrition and what we put in our mouth is essential to how we survive. So anyway, read the article, make your comments. Please, please pass it on with a warning to your friends. Please don't just listen to one of your pediatricians that basically just repeats this article. And they're doing the best that they can and they really are following the recommendations they should be. I'm not, I'm not saying that they're not. Okay, your pediatrician's doing the right thing by telling you the guideline says they're correct. That's what the guideline says. The guideline isn't correct. It's just not correct. They don't talk about the clinical study or the clinical trial. They also, based on this article, aren't even giving all of what includes gluten and casein. So I'm thinking the advice given wasn't actually right. I'm thinking that if in fact none of the people in that trial got benefit, they were not doing the diet correctly because that's just how it works, right? You don't follow directions. You don't get a result pretty easy. Anyway, I love you guys so much. Uh, we'll leave the link below and I appreciate you listening. Love y'all. Bye.